shining a small glowing red dot on us. On the back of your head. As you reach the door, you forget that it's locked. You're not having a great day as usual. Oh, jeez, I didn't even realize we were starting. Hello, everyone, my name is Undead, Undead Jinx, and this is, I think it's Do Not Take This Cat Home. Oh, great. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out, but in the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Typical, but maybe this is just a sign that you've stayed home today? Yeah, you can always try again tomorrow, or you should stay home today, right? You turn to head home when... Aww. Huh? What was that? There are only a few people around on the street. Makes sense due to the increase of missing persons around the area recently. Well, that, and the weather. But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground dampened by the rain makes your steps lo sound louder and more confident than you actually feel. Cute. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley, in a big cardboard box, is a cat. Huh, guess that should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark areas of its black fur. Dark sea, I can't fucking read, guys. It puts its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. S so cute! And it definitely knows it. You've never had much of an opinion, one way or another, about cats before, but if they're all like this one, it's a shock they haven't already found a rule- a way to rule the world. You don't think you'd mind bowing down to a feline overlord. You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves cats in cardboard boxes these days anyways? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the box eventually? The cat doesn't answer you, obviously. It also doesn't do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you, as if waiting for you to make the next move. Okay, so naturally, because the name of the game is Do Not Take the Cat Home, that's what we're going to pick first. Also, this game has like three to four, maybe even more hours of gameplay because there are 39 different endings and one true ending. I don't have it in me to get all 39 endings. Definitely not in one go. But that is why I linked this game in the description below and you guys can play for it. Play it for yourselves. And see what endings you get. With a sigh, you take a decisive step back. As cute as the cat is, you really can't afford to be taking in a pet on a whim. Rent's coming up soon and your job doesn't exactly leave you rolling in dough. You give the cat a sad nod. Sorry. Good luck out here, okay? I wonder if this is the one true ending. Because the game says not to take the cat. And so if we don't, that's the one true ending. You turn around and leave the cat in the alley behind. Rain's picking up. Oh my gosh, so sad you can hear it. Time to head home. Ending. Nyata fool. Okay, so I guess that was that was the probably the one true ending. So now we're gonna see what happens when we take the cat, and I will leave it at whatever ending I get there. <laughs> take cat home. I so appreciate the skip. Oh my gosh, what's the game? Slay Slay the Princess, I think, would benefit greatly from skips if it, if you were trying to guess to find out every every option. You know what? You reach to the box and pick up the cat, holding it out in front of you. Why not? <coughs> Cute. You're all alone and well, I'm kind of in the same boat myself, so you bring the cat close. You didn't realize it was shivering until just then, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least for a little while? Cute. You think a little while would probably be more than a day. You'll be responsible and take it to a shelter tomorrow, but for now, let's get you out of the rain, okay? Oh, I want a cat so freaking badly. You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food, then head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom, one you living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long. Even if it is just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curiously explores its new environment. Leaving the feline to its own devices, you set about making the both of you some dinner. You take out the can of cat food and open it with the tab on top. 
You put some cat food on a saucer and click your tongue to call the cat over to you. It perks up at your beckoning and rushes over. It looks at the plate of food. And completely ignores it. Not hungry, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard-earned cash on it. It is just a cat, after all. I'll just leave it here if you get hungry later, okay? The cat rubs its body against your leg with a purr. You smile. That's enough for a thanks for you. It follows you into the kitchen as you start your own dinner. You decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Bread toasted. Mayo and mustard spread. Turkey and cheese and lettuce perfectly placed. Ow! You wince as you cut your finger on the knife while slicing a tomato. Stupid. You feel a little embarrassed for such a blunder and sigh, tossing the knife onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat hops up onto the counter. It sniffs the knife and meows almost pointedly at you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm alright. It was just an- Oh my gosh, it's licking the knife. You watch as the cat starts to- I knew it! Lick lightly, but enthusiastically at the blood on the knife. At your blood. It's a demon cat. It's a demon cat. It's a demon cat. That's why its eyes were glowing yellow. <laughs> You're so shocked that by the time you come, from, come to your senses, the knife has been completely licked clean. The cat sits back, staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, but that was a little weird, right? Sure, you're no cat expert, but that was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do. Right? Well, regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat in need while it's still raining outside. Not after all your efforts. You were going to take it to the shelter tomorrow anyways. What's one night of awkwardness? Weird or not, it's just a cat. Or a demon. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes downhill from there. Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to lick the wound. While you're eating your sandwich, while you're cleaning up the kitchen, while you try to watch TV, you gently push it away every time, but you're starting to get worried at the strange behavior. What if it got a taste for your blood and thinks you're food now? You're not sure what you'll do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Ugh, come on, enough already. You shove it a little more forcefully this time out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner and into the hall. You sigh deeply. At this point, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe a vet will have an idea of how to calm it down? You can only hope. You don't have any other You can only hope. You don't have any other options left other than tossing the cat out into the rain. After finding the number of a local vet, you pick up the landline and... Cat cut it. The lights just... went out? Oh, cat cut the lights. Great. Just great. Rain must have knocked out the power. You check your cell phone only to find that it's out of batteries. You must have forgotten to charge it before leaving out earlier. The outing had been so spur of the moment that it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. You grab a flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then, why did the power go out? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You turn to check the clock. Ah! Oh, it says kill! Kill? Did I see kill? Oh, I thought I saw help. Maybe it's like... It looks like he, kill he. I don't know. The cat sits on top of your digital clock, staring at you. Thinking now, you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, but the numbers are lit up, and going completely haywire. It is help! There is a help in there. Kill. Help. The cat stares at you. It's completely still. You think it was a statue if you didn't know any better. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking, it's not even breathing, but it's eyes. This isn't normal. You're afraid. You want to run, but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out after all. But as soon as that thought enters your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Those eyes, its eyes hold you still. Even with your flashlight turned on it, its pupils are large, round, inky. Inky what? The flashlight flickers. Oop. And the cat is gone.
Fear immediately grips your mind. The silence punctuated with rapid pumping of your blood in your heart is overwritten as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How is the clock working with no power? You don't know why such a question matters at the moment, but you feel as if having the answer will make sense out of everything that's happening. That order will be restored, but no answer comes to mind. You back away from the clock and feel as if the air itself coils tightly and abruptly in response, like a predator prepared to pounce, but waiting, waiting for your next move, but you're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. But you can't stay still forever, right? Whatever is watching you, you can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know you don't know how you know this, but you can sense it as clearly as if it had whispered. Oh, okay. Right into your ear. Right into your soul. It won't let you wait it out, not that you could, even if it did. You can't stay here. You have to run. With this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens within you making you tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement, of action. But you're still weak from the fear's grip on your mind. Your legs tangle together under you in a haste and you fall onto the ground. Ooh. A sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot. At first, you think you've broken your ankle, but something warm and wet trickles down the length of your foot, pooling underneath it. You hear the sound of metal scraping on tiles after skidding across the floor as if something had been kicked. The knife. Winded from your fall, you look up in a daze and see the object glinting in a strange light coming from outside, the light pouring in from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who, what, in regards to your inexplicably open door, screech to a halt, as your brain finally identifies the metallic ob object you've been staring at. It's your kitchen knife. And still tinted red from your earlier blunder, but that's not right. Wasn't it completely licked clean by the... You gulp dryly at the pain in your foot. You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stepped on, instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you'd left it. When you spy something in the darkness just beyond the knife, it spies right back at you. A pair of glowing golden eyes come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows into the light from your doorway. It pads lightly over to the knife as if step skipping in delight and bends down to lap at the blood dripping from the blade. Ah. Uh, your senses slowly begin to overwhelm you, the chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight, the sound of your shaky breaths discordant against the static now piercing your skull, the dryness on your tongue spreading to your throat, the incomprehensible sight of the stray you'd taken in, licking away at your kitchen knife, once again completely clean, the scent of blood from the fresh wound on your foot. Blood? Golden eyes slide up to you as if in response to your sudden realization. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves, shoulders twitching as if just considering the act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet and out the door. You run, or rather limp, down the empty street. The sky is black and bleeding red, but there's a strange light emitting from nowhere that casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you. Everything, except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the bloody imprints your injured foot leaves in your wake with every impact it makes with the ground. It hurts. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Not when the road ahead of you is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running, because... If that's the cat right there ahead of you, then... What in the world is behind you? Ooh, look behind! Are we about to die? Huh? Interesting. How very, very interesting. Ending zero, it begins. Well... <laughs> The weather is absolutely perfection today. Wait, what? That's a good sign, right? I'm so confused. I, like, clicked ahead because I I thought it had restarted me from the beginning, but it didn't? How did we get a second ending, but we're also able to continue? Unless it continues for us to look at the cat? I don't know what's going on. Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. 
You tended to be allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go or what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss it. Huh? What was that? Oh. It, so it is the same. We get another chance to meet another cat. But instead of it being rainy, it's sunny. Because this is all the same as, as before. The other... So? You look so familiar. <laughs> That's different, right? Then again, it is a cat. Not many ways for a standard black cat to look, after all. This one sure is a cutie, though. Just look. It's not glaring at you or hissing at you or getting this close like other stray cats have in the past. It's just sitting there patiently, waiting for you to do something. Time to take the cat home. <laughs> why does it look sad? Well, why not? Right? It butts your head into your temple, nosing against it. It's purring. Hee <laughs> hee. You can't help but smile at the cat's enthusiasm. Let's get you out of here, yeah? On the way home, you briefly consider getting cat food. But that would be a waste of time. You shrug at the odd feeling and move on. Oh my gosh. This is actually a really interesting take because instead of, like, starting from the beginning, it's like we're playing with the knowledge of our previous playthrough, which is really, really interesting. And I haven't, I haven't seen that be done before in a game. Granted, I don't play many games like this. I've played a few, maybe like four or five, but I've never played one that had multiple endings where anytime you died, you kind of sort of retained that knowledge from your previous death. And where like the setting like literally changed as you kind of like restarted the same story again. Cat's exploring. Do something alone. Do something with cat. That's new. Let's do something with the cat. Like what? Oh. On second thought. <laughs> um, Let's play with the cat. Poor thing was probably bored stiff in that old box all day. Just watching crowds of people walking by them, ignoring them. You can't just leave them alone as soon as you're home. A little interspecies socializing won't kill you, right? Aw, you just want some attention, don't you? You want to play, huh? <laughs> okay then. What to play, though? Ooh, laser pointer. Cats are curious creatures by nature. They're also natural hunters, sort of. Uh, fun fact, lasers and cats are, like... Lasers can stress cats out because they, like, they get stressed about not being able to catch the red dot. I guess if your cat is disinterested in the laser, then it's okay, but ones that really like the laser, it can potentially stress them out. Why not pass the time by letting the cat hunt after something it'll never quite understand? That sounds a little mean, even when you think of it that like that. But it's not like the cat will know anyway. Ignorance is bliss, or so they say. So you dig out your old laser pointer from your long gone dreaded days of group presentations in high school. You flip it on and see that even after all this time the batteries still work. You get a little kick out of aiming it at a mirror hanging in the living room so it reflects off the glass. Ah! I knew it! The cat's gonna scratch us. Making a little red dot appear on your knee. The cat cautiously walks over, stepping every few steps to cast a look of suspicion at you. When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw to your knee. Like it's trying to catch the dot of red light as casually as possible. You manage to hold back a chuckle. Not that, not that it really matters. The cat isn't paying attention to you at all, entirely focused on the light now resting on top of its paw. Hehe. <laughs> you move the light higher, a little higher above your knee. The cat reacts immediately, trying to pin the light down. But in the next second, you've already moved it to the floor. The cat jerkily follows, attempting a more erratic pounce than when you shift the red dot. Over here, over there, and over there. By the couch, on the couch. <laughs> the cat might be ignoring you, but you're certainly enjoying yourself. It's been a while since you've laughed this much. You're laughing so much, in fact, that you accidentally shift the red dot onto a lamp beside the couch. In a haste to get the light, the cat leaps onto the lamp, sending them both to the ground. Oh, <gasps> oh my gosh! The cat is sitting in the middle of the f lamps of the former lamp's broken shards. Back hunched, its head ripping, whipping around back and forth as if in a panic. You quickly turn off the laser pointer and rush over. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Are you hurt? You reach down to pick up the cat and check for any injuries when... We get scratched. 
Yeah. Ow, hey! The cat swipes at you, claws extended. It backs up and twitches away, making frantic half-turns in various directions as if looking for something. Or waiting for something to appear. Ow, jeez, that really hurt, you know. You hold the hand with the scratch close to your chest. It's bleeding, but it's not too big. You're more annoyed than anything, but... Immediately, your annoyance starts to bleed into concern. You watch in shock as the cat starts to run around, tearing at the carpet, the sofa, your armchair. You want to stop it, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of its rampage. Rampage? <laughs> you consider calling a vet for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason, you feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. What happened to you? Is it... An idea comes to you, or rather, a realization. You grasp the laser pointer, aiming it safely away towards the floor in the middle of the living room, thinking, hoping, that the cat would calm down if it found what it was looking for. You turn on the laser pointer. The cat's reaction is immediate. Oh shit. You screwed up. In the span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch on the shredded armchair. Leaps high into the air. Changes in the air. Holy shit. And slams down upon the dot on the floor with the weight of a force that shakes the whole apartment. Maybe even the whole building. You wonder dazedly how none of the other tenants have rushed over to complain about the noise. Yet as you stare at the sight in front of you... The cat has somehow grown in size. Eyes bulging and glowing. Tail thrashing. Teeth enlarged, bared and covered armingly in a bubbling froth. It's got rabies. Its giant claws rip and shred through the carpet, through the floor tiles, and even below them. Ravenously trying to get, get at the red dot, your hands are shaking. You don't know what to do, you feel trapped, you have to get away. Get it away from you. You slowly back up toward the door, the light moves with you. Instinctively, you flick the light away. This way and that, the cat's stampeding after it. So fast. Smashing through the TV, breaking the couch in half. Too fast. Bulldozing through the wall into the hallway. A chance! You turn, intending to bolt out of the door and never come back. But in your haste, you forget something. You forget several somethings. You forget the laser pointer gripping like a lifeline in your hand. You forget the mirror, still miraculously landing on the wall next to the hallway. The laser reflecting off of it, putting a small glowing red dot on us. On the back of your head. Ah! As you reach the door. Holy shit. You forget that it's locked. Oh my gosh. You don't even have the chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. Ooh. You've torn- you're torn to shreds before you can even blink. Ending 12 targeted. Oh my gosh. This is insane. Also, this is fun. It keeps track of all of the endings that you've found. And I guess since the one ending where we don't take the cat home isn't here, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's technically not one of the endings. But I will let you guys figure out your own ending for this game. A link to it will be in the description below. I hope you all enjoyed as much as I did, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.